you need to know pathology chapters one through three. Wouldn't it be nice if you could cover all of that content in one YouTube short? That's what we're going to do right now. Cellular adaptation. Hypertrophy is an increase in cell size, not number. This occurs through gene activation, protein synthesis, and new organelles. The classic example is left ventricular hypertrophy and chronic hypertension. Cardiac muscles are permanent tissue, and so they adapt by hypertrophy, not hyperplasia. Hyperplasia, on the other hand, that's an increase in cell number driven by stem cells. The classic example is the benign prostatic hyperplasia. This is not hypertrophy. Under things like pregnancy, the uterus is going to undergo both hyperplasia and hypertrophy. Atrophy is a decreased cell size and number. This is seen with disuse, denervation, or ischemia. The mechanism here is going to be ubiquitin, proteasome, degradation, and autophagy. Now, metaplasia is the replacement of one mature cell to another type. A classic example is Barrett's esophagus. That's where you go from squamous to columnar due to chronic GERD. This is reversible, but chronic stress can progress to dysplasia and dysplasia progresses to carcinoma. Hypoplasia refers to incomplete development. An example would be congenital diaphragmatic hernia would be pulmonary hypoplasia because there's incomplete development. Cell injury and death is huge on this test. The most common cause is hypoxia, which leads to less ATP. You get the sodium potassium pump failures and that causes cell swelling, which is a reversible injury. Irreversible injury is defined by plasma membrane damage. And there are nuclear changes which occur as well. You should know necrosis is messy, it's related to inflammation, and it's always pathological. Apoptosis, that's super clean, programmed, no inflammation. Here's apoptosis, you can see. Coagulative is ischemia of solid organs except for the brain. Liquefactive is for the brain. Caseous would be tuberculosis and fungal infections. Fat necrosis, think pancreatitis, saponification, and hypocalcemia. Fibrinoid should make you think of immune vasculitides and also malignant hypertension. Gangrenous would be ischemic limb and infection. The intrinsic pathway is mitochondrial first, and then you have the BAX, BAK pathway causing cytochrome C and caspase 9. The extrinsic pathway involves FAS or the TNF receptors, which then lead to caspase 8, and they both converge onto caspase 3. Think of caspase 3 as the executioner. Our free radicals damage lipids, proteins, and DNA. So our defenses against these guys are vitamins A, C, and E. Also, things like catalase and glutathione peroxidase. Now, acetaminophen overdose is bad because it depletes glutathione, and you treat that with N-acetylcysteine. Acute inflammation, super high yields, you should think of neutrophils. The sequence is you have margination, rolling with the selectants, adhesions with the integrins, and then transmigration through PCAM1. If there's a defect in that pathway, think leukocyte adhesion deficiency. If you have chronic inflammation, not acute, think of macrophages and lymphocytes. Now, granulomas form via Th1 cells that release interferon gamma. Caseating, you should think of tuberculosis, and non-caseating, you should think of sarcoidosis. All right, let's talk about wound healing. Permanent tissues heal by fibrosis. Keloid is when there's way too much type 1 collagen. If you want a guaranteed way to pass, visit ivytutoring.net or just like and subscribe.